Good evening. I'm John Bailey. Welcome to, Bo to People to be Heard, the program where people who have something to say have their say. Tonight, you've got Lenore Friedlander of the Service Employees International Union 32BJ and Claudia Rodriguez, her companion on the negotiating committee for the union. And she is here to talk about a union's ongoing fight against business owners who are fighting organized labor by hiring below prevailing wage firms to service their buildings. Well, Laura, you had another event on Barker Avenue Wednesday because your union members have not been rehired at uh, one Barker Avenue. And you also use it to point out that your union contract with commercial building owners is also up this December, this, this December, and you're trying to get jobs back for those workers and fair wages and benefits. Tell us what happened since last fall when your workers were fired out of one Barker Avenue, why it, why it happened, and where it stands now. Uh, thank you, John. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with the rally that we had on Tuesday, mm -hmm. um, uh, June uh, Wednesday, June 12th, uh, was celebrated as Justice for Janitors Day, and we were so pleased to receive a proclamation from the County Executive George Latimer and from the Westchester County Board of Legislators, recognize the really important work that office cleaners mm -hmm. and cleaners like Claudia perform mm -hmm. every day. Most of the cleaners work at night and their work is invisible. Claudio is one of the few that works during the daytime, um, making sure that offices are clean, bathrooms are clean, the common areas are clean, snow gets shoveled uh, in the winter. And it is heavy and backbreaking work. It's work that is very frequently um, <clears throat> perceived as invisible, Some, somehow it happens almost by magic, but they're real people with real lives. Uh, Claudio has beautiful children and a wonderful family um, that she's working to support. And so we really wanted to draw attention to the important work and the value of the work that gets done cleaning offices and institutions in our county, mm -hmm. as well as who some of the members actually are. Mm -hmm. And that brings and we, that brings us really to the issue at 1 and 3 Barker Avenue. Uh, as you're aware, last fall the building was sold and the new owners brought in Zauber Janitorial, which is a cleaning contractor that is paying less than what Claudio makes and less than what most of the other cleaners make. Um, we understand they're paying minimum wage to, to their workers. Uh, which is not fair to those workers. And the night, the first night that Zauber was on the job, we were there uh, with the workers who had worked in that building for many years, hoping that they would be able to be hired and keep their jobs mm -hmm. working in that building, performing the services, they know the tenants, they know the routine in that building, and the company refused to hire them. So we've had a number, we've reached out to the contractor, they the, new, the, new, the, new, cleaning the contractor. new cleaning company, and they've yeah. refused to meet with us, they refused to take the applications, um, and so those workers were left with almost no notice uh, out on the street. One of the things that we learned on Wednesday is our county legislators really stepped up and said there's some loopholes in a law that was designed to protect workers in situations like that where the cleaning contractor changes and they shouldn't lose their job through no fault of their own. And so we understand they will be introducing uh, some amendments to close some of the loopholes to protect workers like those, those hardworking office cleaners right. who lost their job, you know, really with almost We have no a notice. picture of that rally, a composite, uh, which should be going up shortly, and, and there it is. And uh, uh, the George Latimer was there, and he made a very sp a speech that said, told us something we didn't know. He, his, uh, his father was a maintenance man, and uh, his mother worked in a, uh, a lab, and uh, he... Yes, and it was a very, uh, very touching thing. And see, I am your, your son. He told the union, and he also introduced Kitty Colville, who worked to get this legislation done. What is the loophole? What enabled the firms to basically get away with well, this? Well, uh, 
one of the loopholes that we really hope to change is uh, and is that the there's a certain size of building that's covered or complex of buildings. It needs to be at least 100,000 square feet, um, which is a medium-sized building. The two buildings, one and three, Barker, together are over that size threshold, So, and they have always been uh, considered a complex and covered by the law. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the building, thing. the whole thing. Both so buildings. the complex is is covered is currently covered by the law but there is kind of a loophole that says um, there's a size threshold for the cleaning contractor and okay. so a set of buildings can be covered but if a cleaning contractor is set up or formed um, or only has one or two buildings or only has a complex uh, then it then it could be exempt from the law so in this case the cleaning contractor uh, mm -hmm. may be exempt from the law because it has uh, less employees than than the law uh -huh. so uh, it's, it's, it's sets the as the threshold. Contractor. So the buildings are covered, yeah. but the, the contractor right now may be exempt. And so that's the loophole, is to synchronize and harmonize and to say, okay, if you if there are six or seven people who are working in this complex that's covered mm -hmm. because the size of building requires it to be covered, mm -hmm. then the law should apply to them as well. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the loophole and we're trying to... And supposedly going to close that. Exactly. In future exactly. amalgamations would be affected. Exactly. And one of the other things that, that, that we noticed in this situation was um, there's no requirement that the new cleaning company or even the new building ownership or building management be on public record any place. Mm -hmm. So until in this situation, when the building was sold, mm -hmm. um, there's no place that in that that information about who is the new building owner, so that we could reach out and have a conversation and say, bring this situation to the attention of the building owner and say, hey, you may not be aware, but this is the situation that's happening, or we'd like to contact the cleaning They're contractor, <laughs> and that we are trying to yeah. get the name and the address of the contractor. So, so this is an issue that there needs to be stronger enforcement but the owner hasn't even responded and discussed then the it. owner has not mm -hmm. the owner has not responded and yeah. so we're so appreciative that our local elected officials are taking action are stepping up mm -hmm. are are proposing some great solutions and to close some of the loopholes. Yeah. Now, Ms. Rodriguez, um, how have the workers been affected? Have they found other work? Uh, it's like it's very hard to say that when you are working for like house cleaning and you have a lot of experience in another side to the another kind of business. So let me explain a little bit more about more personal. Mm -hmm. It's like I am a mother of three kids and I came to this country like 10 years ago mm -hmm. and I want the opportunity to grow, to grow up my kids, to go to school. I want to build that confidence like so today you are just a person who go to high school but tomorrow you want to go to the college mm -hmm. and that's that was my dream and I think everybody have that kind of dream like you want to grow up so I used to be a hairdresser mm -hmm. I used to work in a hair salon and it's hard to say like you can make a lot of people say a lot of money but it's not but you don't have that kind of benefit like you have when you working like this so maybe you can compare it like how can you can be um, offices right now cleaning the garbage uh, cleaning bathroom um, cleaning the classroom in the place where I work mm -hmm. I work in university and I don't feel bad about it because in the other side I have a lot of good things it's like I have the benefit now my kids have the insurance now I have the opportunity to go to the school to learn computer, um, English class. I can go to the hospital because I have the medical insurance. Mm -hmm. I can have the medicine for my kids. And we don't want to lose that. So right now we have the history about the but one the, and three Barker. The workers are victimized by this draconian and inhumane process uh, that 
that they when they get fired for no reason except that they're yes. too expensive. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's just uh, not right. right. It's not. No. You're right. So we try to do the, the right job. It's like, let me do my job and also to get my benefits. It's like, I work for this. Yeah. No. So we have a lot of people in the union, like they say, okay, I can be a um, model, I can work at um, shopping center in a hair salon, like I used to do it. But then you say, okay, over here I have more opportunity. And I don't want it that not just for me. I want for everybody to have the equal opportunity to work, to feel like you don't feel afraid to go to your manager if you work in another building like they don't have the union, don't feel afraid to say, okay, I want my vacation day, or today I feel sick, I can work. Mm -hmm. And you don't have the support behind to you. And so the when you, management says no. Yes, that's if, normally if, what happens because- If you don't like it, mm -hmm. you can leave. Exactly. You have no protection. Yes. You, and they take advantage of that as much as they can. Yes, so take thanks to- They do. <laughs> yeah. So thanks to the union, we have the support behind to us. It's like when you are together, you are strong. And that's our point. Right. Uh, now, shall we discuss uh, your upcoming contract sure. negotiations with the um, commercial building operators? Now, last year you settled with the uh, uh, rental, residential. rental uh, owners. Last yeah. year, our residential members' contract expired, and we were successful in reaching a new agreement. This year, our commercial janitorial agreement, and we negotiate with the cleaning contractors. They join together and they negotiate together, the cleaning companies, um, and we bargain an agreement that not only covers Westchester and the Hudson Valley, but it also covers Fairfield County in Connecticut. Um, it's kind of a common real estate market. It's the way the real estate market looks at the industry. So that contract, that has about 3,000 workers in it, about half in, in Hudson Valley and about half in Fairfield County, expires December 31st. That's a big contract. It is a big contract. Yeah. Um, so, what are you, since you successfully negotiated with the residential mm -hmm. um, apartment owners, are you going to apply the, um, what do you particularly feel is wrong with the present contract? What do you want to achieve? We want to achieve, like, keep the benefits we have right now, plus get more benefits, and also we try to fight for those people who doesn't have any benefits at all. So that's the main point for us. Mm -hmm. I see. So are you looking for an increase in pay? We are looking for an increase in pay. Uh, the cost of health uh, care is increasing, as everybody Definitely. knows. Our union has done an amazing job of managing the cost, but we do need to get the increased resources to maintain the health insurance and the other benefits that we have in our agreement. And workers like Claudia deserve a raise every year, and so we are going to be uh, bargaining for uh, wage increases that are fair yeah. um, so that she can take care of her family, so that her kids have the opportunity these to go to working college. working at two and a half percent inflation these days. We'll see yeah. what it is at the yeah. end of the year. Yeah. And um, this last contract was a four-year agreement, so we'll be bargaining mm -hmm. not only for the next year, but for the next few years. Yes, about three years? Um, three it year? could be three or it could be four. I see. Um, now. At the um, rally on Wednesday, uh, it was unique in the fact that a representative of the Communication Workers of America stood up and said he, they appreciated the SEIU's support of them when they were on strike against uh, Verizon. Mm -hmm. And they said the union would do what the communications workers would do whatever they wanted and that you would to support you. And, uh, what do you, you, this is the only major union I re recall that has backed you up in this ongoing disputes over the last two years. Well, actually we have the support of many, many unions. 
um, and they have they stood with us in the residential contract negotiations. Okay. The president of the Labor Council, Tom Carey, spoke at our rallies and pledged mm -hmm. their support. So we actually enjoy the support of um, many, many other unions, okay. and we support, likewise, we support other unions in their effort to win new contracts, to organize yeah, workers same. into their unions, um, and so we appreciated the uh, that the communication workers representative joined with us um, uh, this week. Right, and but this was a real public display. You don't usually don't see that. Uh, it was a very public mm -hmm. display, and we certainly appreciate that. The communication workers union has been a great partner to work with, and we were very supportive when they were forced out on strike by Verizon, um, and. We were they glad they were contract. able to win a good contract. Yes. Now, um, speaking of the actual negotiations, you uh, have until December 31st on the present yes. contract, and you said publicly Wednesday that they, you would consider definitely a strike. It's always something that we consider. We hope we don't have to strike, but we have to prepare for a strike. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, the lives of Claudia and her colleagues and the lives of thousands of members of our community are at stake here. And so our goal is to reach a fair agreement, and just like we did uh, four years ago. But in the event that uh, the employers want to uh, uh, take away wages or not fund our benefits, that's certainly an option that we're going to have to consider. I understand. Um, now. Again, you, Claudia, you were saying you're looking at the wages and the benefits. How do do you, if the if the commercial owners want to uh, say, well, you have to pay more of your share of the benefits, which is what the school districts and the, and the municipalities are attempting with their workers. How are you comfortable with that? Striking an increase in benefits but with a it's like percentage of the wages. Before we go to strike, yeah. that's the last thing. Yeah. It's like we go to the table to negotiate. Mm -hmm. So we want to explain our point. They're going to get the opportunity to explain their point too. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be together, to work together. Because of course, they're going to get some benefit from us and we're going to get it from them. So we wanted to talk to each other. But definitely, if we have to go to the strike, it's like, mm -hmm. let's say, the people who used to work in Wang and Tree Barker, they don't was ready for the strike. Mm -hmm. But when things happen, sometimes you have to take the step. Mm -hmm. So we want to do it little by little. And hopefully, it's like, we can do it the right way. Just like, explain your point, I can explain my point, and we can negotiate it. Right, it is the, we journalists, jackals that we are, always consider labor negotiations, copy, controversy, eat. But basically, you make an excellent point. You have to sit down and talk and figure out you're in this together. The attitude around the country these days in many places is we don't want to even hear what you have to say. But that is, that's the key to your previous negotiations. Uh, exactly. And the other key is that we represent nearly uh, all cleaners in the, the major office buildings and institutions in this area. So we've created an in, what we call an industry standard. So that really helps in the negotiations. Every building doesn't negotiate on its own. We negotiate something. We create a level playing field. It's the same for every building owner. It's the same for every cleaning contractor. And that allows us to move forward together. And that creates fair competition for the cleaning companies. It creates a fair and level playing field for the building owners that um, every company, every unionized company is going to be required to pay the same wages and benefits. So that avoids a race to the bottom where wages and benefits and and workers' lives are damaged in the course of the cleaning companies competing. And the working environment is damaged too. Because and the working environment SEIU is damaged. SEIU service buildings are better serviced. 
Well, we hope so. We work hard to do that. Our members we feel very standards. proud. Exactly, yeah. feel very proud of the work they do. One of the things that we've bargained for is a training fund, and that's one of the things that Claudia talked about a little bit. Our members can go to school for free, for basic education classes, for computer classes, for vocational classes, for green cleaning classes, um, to upgrade their skills, and our employers we bargain with our employers to invest in their employees and say we want to develop their skills. We want many of the members um, who are born in other countries, there are English classes, there's GED classes, because we want them to be able to be full functioning parts of our community, be able to communicate. There are citizenship classes. We encourage our members who are non-citizens to become citizens, to vote, to participate in the civic life of our community, they're important parts yeah, and uh, of our community. And the, how many men and how many women are in the union? Um, well, in the commercial the, the commercial cleaning sector, it's about half and half women and men. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's here in the Hudson Valley. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the what will be the effect of a strike on the uh, commercial businesses? Um, well, we hope it doesn't come to a strike. We have of course, plenty of we have plenty of time to to <laughs> negotiate to right. negotiate. Right. But um, a strike does create a level of disruption and discomfort uh, for everybody. Mm -hmm. Right, but and nobody likes that. I mean, there when the air conditioning goes out, it's impossible to get any work done. Nobody when likes that. When the heating goes out, when the well, anyway. Right. And Do one I of, have to paint you a picture? Right. <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, one of the things that we're very fortunate and we feel very fortunate about is that we enjoy, we have incredible political support of our elected officials mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we uh, will be calling on them um, in support, to demonstrate their support, to communicate to the real estate industry, to the cleaning contractors that they believe there should be uh, a fair settlement and that the workers deserve decent wages and decent benefits. Mm -hmm. Many of our members actually have two jobs mm -hmm. because uh, the jobs they have in cleaning aren't sufficient. They're, uh, they're either part-time jobs and they need a full-time job uh, to supplement mm -hmm. that. And so, um, you know, that's a situation that we're constantly working to improve. Right. And of course, it is in the county's best interests to point out that this is a cooperative and constructive and uh, progressive labor situation in Westchester County to attract businesses that might be put off by some of the other disadvantages in the county, like the taxes, for example. Right. So it, it, I'm surprised the county hasn't been much more aggressive in the support of you. And, you know, discussing, like, for example, when the Department of Motor Vehicles is going to go into Three Barker Avenue, how can the Department of Motor Vehicles move in to a building that um, is employing non-union contractors? It's a state organization. I think that the county should talk to the DMV, don't you? But they should. <laughs> only my suggestion, <laughs> folks. But I mean, that's just terrible. I mean, they, but now, Claudia, is there anything you would like to say in conclusion about the workers' plight? It's like our work plan is to be together. We don't going to go to the strike, but we have. if we have to, we're going to do it. Because right now, you see, like, we called your attention, a lot of people's attention, because we did the rally in one and three Barker. So we don't want to do that, but we want to do it like be together, be strong, and to all the members in the union, it's like okay. don't feel afraid. Mm -hmm. um, feel confident. Believe in the union. We can be strong. We can do it together. Right. One more. The union makes an incredible difference in the lives of thousands of families here in the Hudson Valley and here in Westchester County. Claudia talked about the difference having the unions made for her, for her sense of security, that her children have health insurance, that can count on, that she can contribute and be really built towards their future. She came to this country in search of the American dream. Yesterday was Flag Day. and. 
we just want to lift up the importance of making that a reality for thousands and thousands of people and that's what our mission is our mission is to change the lives and improve the lives of working people in the janitorial industry uh, in building maintenance and building security um, and together that's something that we can accomplish this is going to be a year that we can take another step forward in improving the lives of thousands of of uh, janitors and office cleaners in our county and we're uh, really hopeful that we're going to be able to continue that progress. Now if you are a non-union custodial worker what is your plight? Um, m many non-union custodial workers get paid minimum wage they have no paid holidays they have no job security they frequently have no health insurance and no um, you know, few benefits. If a building is closed, the 4th of July is coming, the building is closed, there's no work for them, that's just a short check in that week. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we encourage every non-union mm -hmm. worker to join together to find out what union uh, covers their kind of work and mm -hmm. contact that union because that's the way if you want they to can change you their can life. You can join the SEIU. You can change yeah. the SEIU. Yeah. Yes. How do you do that? Um, the people can contact our office, they can go to our website, we're at, at SEIU32BJ.org, uh, reach us. We have offices here in White Plains, we have offices in New York City, we have offices in Stamford, Connecticut. We, we represent 175,000 workers in 11 states up and down the East Coast. So, uh, well, Do you think of this... Uh, um, negotiations you are doing is going to be reflected nationally on all the other offices of the SEIU and that's know, a know. great question well our union uh, 75,000 uh, cleaners and janitors in 32 BJ's contract expire between October this year and September next year so we have about 20,000 in New York City we have 4,000 in Connecticut we have about 10,000 in New Jersey Washington DC and um, a lot of the same companies actually operate in in those different so areas. So it's really going to be a big issue for a lot of places. It's going to be a big issue and December 31st this this year uh, contracts expire New Jersey, New York, Long Island, Connecticut, Hudson Valley. It's a big time problem. Well Lenora Friedlander and Claudia Rodriguez you have been heard Thank you very much for explaining this situation, which is really a tragedy playing out. And because you're the smallest union, you are taking the first affront. You know, it's just terrible. John Bailey, good night for people to be heard.